praise the Lord and welcome to the Old Path Bible Study. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson here in my office at Crossway Church in Queen City, Texas. Glad to be with you today, gathered around God's Word. Nothing like it in all of the universe. Nothing like God's Word. The Word of God is God. So when we gather around God's Word, we gather around the Lord Himself and we seek to have more understanding, more knowledge, more wisdom that will bring us along the path with our Lord, the light of his word. Remember, it is the word of the Lord that has been given to us as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. He is our light. And what makes him our light is what he did at Calvary. The light of our Lord is his righteousness for us. The path of the righteous shall shine more and more unto that perfect day, Proverbs 4.18. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, grab your Bibles and let's get rather, ready rather, to gather around Hebrews chapter 12 and talk a little more today about the chastening of the Lord. It might not be a very popular subject, but you're going to experience the chastening and the scourging of the Lord if you belong to the Lord. And if you're not experiencing uh, chastening, then you're not the Lord's. Now, there's a lot of people who never got disciplined growing up, and it would make it a little more difficult for them. I don't care what anybody says. It would make it a little more difficult for them to understand disciplinary training. You know, I hear people all the time, well, I never had to get a spanking growing up. My, my thought is you, pro you need one now then. And uh, because everybody, God says, all of his people are required to be chastened. Why? Because we drift away really more than we like to admit from the place where we're partaking, literally partaking of his holiness. In verse 10 in chapter 12 tells us that the way we profit of the Lord, any profit, it means any time our faith is really right, meaning in the sacrifice of Christ, that we're partaking, we're being profited by the Holy Spirit of the benefits of the cross, We're, anytime we're being profited in any way, it is a partaking of his holiness. And when we move away from a focus of, let me say it again, when we move even a little bit away from the focus of and the faith exclusively in <coughs> the sacrifice, the death, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we move away from the only place we can partake of his holiness. And Romans 6 teaches that. So again, this is going to be Hebrews 12, part 10 on this. Let me see. Oh, wow. It's the first day of December, 2022. So I know the Lord is going to impart truth into the spirit-taught hearts today. All over the world, the Lord will be able to impart truth, guide us into more truth, those who have spirit-taught hearts. And that is those who are looking unto the Lord through faith in the sacrifice. They will find, they will find the Lord putting his words in their heart and writing them literally on the tablets of their mind. And, and th all that is equivalent to him guiding you into the experience of all truth. That is the goal for today and every moment of the day. Hebrews chapter 12, again, this is part 10. We have to do something every once in a while when we're studying and that is, look at where we are and then look back at the footsteps that brought us to where we are and then look ahead to the footsteps that lie ahead that we're about to walk into. And we've talked last couple of sessions concerning verses 
uh, 7 through 10, and we'll read through that again today. But before we do, let's back up to the first mention of chastening. The first mention is in verse 5, where he begins to move into the topic of chastening, and look at what he says in verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. Now, now, I'd have to ask the question right now, can, could you stand up and tell somebody right now as a child of God when the last time the Lord rebuked you was? When was the last time you were chastened, scourged of the Lord? Because most of the body, most of the body of Christ today, as I said earlier, they're they're like a lot of our society today. Well, I never needed a whooping. Oh, son, you needed a bad whooping. You you needed it. I don't care how good you thought you were. You you when you say I didn't need it, you must be looking at other people and comparing yourself to them that did need it. I got news for you, whether you got spankings, whippings, or whether you didn't, you needed them. And if you got them, you needed more. I promise you. I don't care how good you thought you were. And when it comes to spiritual things, the Lord says, if you are his, you are not without chastening. If you're without chastening, he goes too far as to say here that you're not his. Now, you need to think about this. So when I asked the question, could you stand up and give a testimony of the last time the Lord chastened you, rebuked you, scourged you? That means put you through the fire in some way. Would you be able to answer that? Or would you just go blank? Because if you're walking with the Lord Jesus Christ as a child of God, you're going to look away. You're going to venture away from that place, the only one place where you can partake of his holiness, and that is simple, childlike faith in your union with Christ in his death. You need to, you can still be going, listen, you can still be going through the motions of all your religious, spiritual seeming to be activity and not partaking of the holiness of God. Because to partake of the holiness of God means you've got to come to the conclusion that the only object of faith for you is the cross of Christ, and that's where your faith has to be. You begin to partake of God's holiness when He made you righteous. That's under holiness. When he told you in Romans 6 that you've got to choose who you're going to yield to. And if you yield to that which made you a servant of righteousness, then you can continue to look. Verse 11, yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. But when we start getting focused on the purpose-driven or the prophetic move or the promise keepers or, or our gifts or any focused on anything other than the cross of Christ, faith in anything other than the cross of Christ, you can count on it. It ain't maybe. God comes quickly to rebuke. The question is, and I've asked it for, for a while, how come the church... Don't even think they're being rebuked of the Lord. How come they think it's everybody but them or their church or their denomination or, or everybody but them? We need to wake up today. When our faith is not in the cross, there's a rebuke coming. All the, all the warnings and corrections and rebukes you see on social media that you unfollow or unlike or, or hate or you unfriend or you block, that's the Lord reaching for you, my friend. You can talk about how ugly they might be. That's the rebuke of the Lord coming for you. And as long as you're running, you're, you're not going to partake of God's holiness until you come back to the partaking place. And that's just 
the way it is. A lot of folk don't like that. They don't like this straight and narrow teaching and preaching. They don't like this bluntness, but you can't get around it. Those are the same spoiled kids that grew up spoiled, never getting disciplined properly, and now spiritually, they don't understand discipline. Everybody else needs a whipping, but we're okay. I'm telling you, we're not okay. The word despise here, that we're being told not to despise the chastening of the Lord, listen carefully to what it means. To have little regard for. Wow, is that you? Is that me? Do, do we not give proper attention? Do, do, we, do we give little regard to or disesteem? The chastening of the Lord? When we start listening to somebody talk about the chastening and the scourging of the Lord, which is new covenant reality, do we kind of turn that off? Do we, do we turn that off, move away from that? Don't run from what the Lord says is inevitable if you belong to him. And that's why I keep writing in the, 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 the subject matter of, of these messages, these teachings, learning to recognize the chastening of the Lord because I know what it's like to be rebuking the devil and it be the Lord chastening me and it might take some people years to realize it or it might, listen, it some of God's people never realize it's him chastening them and that I believe is why Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, many are weak, sick, and dying prematurely because they're not discerning the Lord's body. If you're not discerning what the Lord did in his body on the tree, you will never discern his chastening. Even though he's chastening you, you could be rebuking the devil. And it's the Lord chastening you. But we're taught as a church today that, it, well, it's because of your faith that, that you're under it. No, it's the Lord bringing a chastening. If your faith is not in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and you're involved in all these other fads, all these other movements, and you're up in a church where you got to have a personal word of prophecy every time you go somewhere <coughs> or you're chasing big name ministers down looking for a personal word you you just you, you know you're you, listen you're not after the truth you're just after these other things if you really belong to the lord he's going to chasten you and he's going to scourge you but that he says don't despise the chastening of the lord and don't grow weak and weary don't faint when you're rebuked of him don't, don't yank out the towel like you're threatening God. You're going to quit if, if he keeps you know, correcting you. I'm telling you, I'll be honest with you, most of the church today can't even be corrected. You start trying to correct a child of God, you start trying to bring correction to a Christian, and all of a sudden they're hearing God talk about being in another church or going home and just being a media member, you know. You, God told me I just need to be a media member. No, you can't get along with people. And that's a part of your chastening. You're, you're, you're suffering now. And I'm not talking about people that don't have a cross-centered church to go to. I'm talking about them that do and just don't. Flesh, carnal. They're trapped in it. They're trapped in it. Don't, don't think that that ain't a part of the chastening of the Lord is the result of your carnality. If you choose to go that way, you, you're, listen, you're going to be chastened of the Lord. You're not getting out of it. He says in verse 6, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges. That word scourge means flogs. That means there's disciplinary instruction and training. That's what chastening is. And it comes with experiential uncomfortableness. It comes with experiential things that I don't like. And, and that's why we'll, if we're not careful will be found rebuking the devil and it not be the devil at all. It's the Lord chastening us. Now, he may be allowing the enemy to do things and allowing our own carnal flesh to keep us trapped. He allows those things, but his purpose behind allowing all that is for us to wake up and realize I'm, 
I've been caught off guard. I've, I'm not partaking of the holiness of the Lord. I'm trusting in all these winds of doctrines that just keep every year blowing through the church. And I'm thinking, this is it. Now, I'm, this has got to be at this time. I just feel so right about this. Uh, oh, have you heard this minister? Have you, have you been to one of his conferences? Have you, have you, oh, my friend, have you come back to Calvary? Have you come back to the focus of and exclusive faith in the death of Jesus? For there, the Holy Spirit is delivering you unto always. 2 Corinthians 4.11, and there is what you've got to be beholding. That glorious image, that's what you're being made conformable unto, my friend. Philippians 3.10, 2 Corinthians 3.18. Forget all the preachers who not focused on this and preaching this. They're, they're, listen, you'll never realize you're being chastened of the Lord if you're not sitting under a cross-eyed preacher a preacher of righteousness, you'll never even know. They'll be rebuking the devil, screaming at the devil, talking about the devil, the uh, person, the, the one who's, uh, we should be talking about the less. And they, man, they'll be talking, they'll be quoting scripture left and right. And it, boy, it'll sound so good, but you'll leave unchanged. You'll, you'll say you changed, but you won't be changed. And as long as your faith is not brought back to the object of Christ and his cross, my friend, the chastening of the Lord is upon you because you cannot partake of his holiness outside of exclusive faith, your union with Christ in his death at Calvary. There is no partaking of holiness outside of that faith. That faith that saved you is the only faith that works and provides for you the keeping fruit-bearing power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing else works. There is more chastening going on in the church today than ever has been before, but it's not recognized because it's, it's lightly esteemed. It's despised. See, the devil is good at what he does that's so bad. He gets you to see the chastening of the Lord as just the devil attacking you, and the enemy may be attacking you, but there's more to it than that. How do I know it's the chastening of the Lord? Because my faith is not exclusively in the cross. There, when it's found, I'm not talking about a blanket statement where I say, well, of course I believe in the cross. I'm talking about it's where you find all that you're looking for to the point you begin to let everything else be counted as loss and dung. And you quit boasting in any other thing. And you get out of those dead places of false worship and false humility that don't have a clue what the chastening of the Lord is or even what brings it on. And you got to get away from all that. I don't care how much good relationships you got with them, how close you are with your family. Jesus said you got to have more going on with him than you do with them or you're not going to have anything going on with him. That's what he taught. You've got to get Get out of those places that are not cross-centered, cross-focused, preaching the Word of God, teaching the Word of God in that kind. There's even some people who have taught us that 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 are waning now and moving away. It, it's it's obvious that when you're in a mixture, you are a part of the mixture, and when you are a part of the mixture, it is affecting you and everyone outside of the mixture sees what's going on. You can scream and throw comments out and try to sound this way and that way, but when you're in a mixture, you are a part of a mixture and it is affecting you and will grow worse and worse and worse until you finally realize I have got to get up and get out. There's been other people get up and get out, but we always want to make up some other excuse as to why they get up and get out instead of the reality they got up and got out because they refused to be a part of the mixture. 
And even some of them that get up and get out refuse to really tell it like it was because they're you're trying to place some value, some false sense of unity on relationships that is not spiritual unity of the faith of the Son of God. Loving somebody is being real with somebody, not just putting up with somebody. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And if the Lord is going to chasten every single one of his children, then every single one of his children need to wake up and realize, am I being chastened? It's an easy question to answer. How, let's talk about it again. How do I know that I'm being chastened of the Lord? When my faith is not exclusively in the cross of Christ, I, listen, when, when I'm not trusting in the cross, I'm not partaking of his holiness. The chastening, listen to this very carefully. The chastening of the Lord is not about the acts of sin I'm committing. And of course, God's not pleased with acts of sin. But acts of sin in my life are there because of the wrong object of faith in my heart. When the cross of Christ is what I'm trusting in, the sin nature becomes dominant and can no longer force me to commit acts of sin. But And listen, the, the most deceiving place to be is the religious place to where you don't know anything about a sin nature or, 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 or all your good deeds that you have going on have you deceived like because, see, the greatest sin of all is not to have your faith in the cross. That's the greatest sin of all. Because all acts of sin only take place when we're not trusting in the cross of Christ. All of them. All of them. So, it's easy to know when I'm being chastened of the Lord. Because... He comes to chasten and discourage me when I'm not partaking of his holiness. Look at verse 10. For verily, they, verily, our, our earthly fathers, for a few days when they were training us up, weaning us as children, chastened us after their own pleasures. But God chastens us for our profit. What's our profit? How, what is it? That when we're profiting of the Lord, what, what is it his chastening comes to bring back that wasn't there? What does his chastening come to again produce in our lives? The profit of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is what? Partaking of his holiness. Part, that, that's not long sleeves because it wasn't the long sleeves of Jesus that provided us holiness or the experience of holiness. It's what he did at Calvary and our faith alone in that. Why do you think these churches are popping up all over the world now focused on the cross, determined to know nothing but Christ and him crucified, learning every word, jot and tittle in the Bible through the lens of Calvary. And preachers are out there preachers are out there making fun of this move of God. Oh, they're just determined, 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 determined. I've heard all the lamb blasting, all the, the, the things that are said about being focused on Calvary. All it is is the devil speaking through them. They're being chastened, and they don't recognize what it is, and the Lord. We, we found our Lord chastening and scourging us. We, we realized uh, by the Spirit of the Lord what was really going on there, why I was found in an old warehouse uh, uh, being stranded, and in the condition I was in, it was the chastening of the Lord, the scourging of the Lord, the flogging of the Lord to get my attention back on the focus of Calvary and while they're throwing all these black, well, they've turned the preaching of the cross into a law. That's the avoidance of chastening. Those are all remarks in avoiding the chastening of the Lord. I don't care what people say. It don't matter. I got a Bible, hallelujah. 
Watch this now. This is good. Let's read verse 10 now. <clears throat> that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now let's read verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. What I went through 18 years ago was not joyous. Coming out on the other side has been very joyous day after day after day after day. But when I was going through that ch period of chastening of the Lord, it was not joyous, but it was grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, what did it yield? What, did, what happened to me? My goodness, the peaceable fruit of righteousness came about. You see, Romans 6 gives all Christians the information and the opportunity to yield to the avenue that made them a servant of righteousness, which is serving obedience unto righteousness, or we can trust in anything other than the cross at any moment and be found yielded to sin, the sin nature, unto death. Paul experienced it after his born-again experience. When, when, when He said, I was alive once without the law. That's his born-again experience. But when, when sin came, when, when, when the law came, sin revived. That means when he started thinking he could, he could, he could obey the law now and, 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 and be acceptable with God or, or be an overcomer now by, by obeying the law. It, when, when the law came, sin, the sin nature revived, and Paul said, and I died. That's talking about when you trust in the law, that not, not just Ten Commandments of Moses, anything other than the cross is law. Trusting in the cross is trusting in Christ. Trusting in anything else and calling it God is trusting in self. The cross and Christ are everything else and self. The church don't know nothing about this. That's why they don't recognize chastening when it comes. <sighs> mm -hmm. So watch this now. Let's go back and read through this this morning. I, I'll go a little bit over because I'm not really held up by time. Hallelujah. Verse 7, If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastens not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you're bastards, that means illegitimate, and not sons. You just think you're a Christian. If you're not being chastened of the Lord, you're not his. There are many who follow many different Jesuses they've, they've made up in their minds, but they're not following the Jesus of Calvary. Oh, they might say they believe in this or that, but they're not following the Jesus of Calvary. It's Calvary that made our Jesus who our Jesus is to us. It's not Mary being divine. If you think Jesus had a divine mother, then you got a different Jesus than I got. My Jesus had a mother who was a sinner like everybody else had been born of a man and a woman. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if your Jesus has a divine mother, that's not you getting Jesus a little wrong. That's you having another Jesus. That's what Paul said. There would be other Jesuses, other spirits, other people bringing other gospels that are not a gospel. That's where we live today. Verse 9. Furthermore, we've had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection, be in reverence unto the Father, our Heavenly Father, the Father of spirits, and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but God, he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. And again, the only place to partake of God's holiness is through a conscious, not getting back in a church, not starting to read my Bible again. 
a conscious faith, trust, dependence upon Jesus and what he did in his death. <clears throat> this is why most of the church is not walking where they think they are because they only look at the cross for initial salvation. They don't know the first thing about the way of Calvary for daily experience. Jesus taught it, unless you deny yourself, take up the cross daily and follow me, you cannot be his disciple. That means you can't learn of him. No matter what you think you're learning, you're not learning of him without faith in the cross because everything he teaches, he can only impart through your faith in the cross. Outside of that, my friend, you might learn to quote half the Bible and put on a good show, but you're not learning of him. The devil can quote all the Bible. Lost people know Bible verses. The ones that justify their sin. Everybody okay today? Watch now. Verse 10, for they, our earthly fathers, they corrected us, they chastened us after their own pleasure, but he, God, our heavenly father, only chastens us so that we will profit. And our profiting is to be partakers of his holiness. So he chastens us when we're not trusting in the cross. Now, let me say this about chastening and scourging. Sometimes the Lord can chasten us, correct us without scourging, without the flogging that he has to sometimes bring. Let me give you an example. All that went on in my life until he was able to get me back to the focus of and trust in and dependence upon Jesus and what he did at Calvary alone was scourging and flogging. Horrible situations. All for the purpose of getting me back to the focus of the cross. In the early days of preaching this message, years and years ago, and it, it, it could happen at any time, but it, in the early days of my ministry, true ministry, preaching this message, becoming a minister of righteousness, when I would venture away from the focus of Calvary, the Lord would quicken me even in the pulpit and chasten me a little bit and say, this is not my gospel. He'd speak to me while I was ministering the word. I'd start venturing away, getting into all kind of other stuff. He'd say, this is not my gospel. That's chastening. Have you recognized that yet, my friend? That's chastening. If I choose to ignore that, esteem that very little, despise that. Look, let me go back up here and click on this word despise. If I choose to give little regard to that, if I would have chosen to ignore that, I promise you, my friend, there would have come a scourging. It's like the father who can walk in the room and look at a child and the child become fearful and change. Other children, the father can walk in and look at them the same way, and that child just like, you ain't going to do nothing. Push you to the limit. Make you pull that rod out. We can be like that as children of God. And then we can act just like children do. I didn't do nothing. Why, why am I? Why, I didn't do anything. You know you did. When the Lord shows up and tells you your focus is not Calvary like it should be, it's not the cross like it should be, you know it's not. Well, you yeah, ha, ha, ha. no, no. He's brought a cross preaching church to your city, to your town, and you're still stuck over in that mess. You're still over in that, oh, no. You can count on the scourge and coming. Why? Because I'm not in a cross preaching church. Because you're choosing not to be focused on that or gathered around people where that is the focus. He sent that church there for you, my friend. You mean everybody in town? Either they'll start preaching it or yes, everybody in town. But I've heard, I've heard preachers say, we, we ain't preaching that. We, we, that might be good for them, but that ain't good. No, no, no. If your focus and dependence in your conscious faith is not the sacrifice of Christ, and let me say something to the preachers. If it is yours, you're preaching it. 
If it is yours, you're preaching it. If it is your dependence, if that's what you're depending on, trust, you're growing to be more determined than ever before to know nothing other than Christ and Him crucified. And if you're not, you better get ready, my friend. And the reason you found this particular teaching online is so that you could know from this moment forward what's bringing the scourging, what's bringing the chastening if you belong to the Lord. Because it's coming. It's already there on 99.9% .9 of the church and they don't even recognize it is for what it is because they think they're doing all the right things. Nothing's working. Nothing's working. I did, I'm miserable. My friend, you're being chastened. When you get back to Calvary, all that attitude of all the feelings, all that mess of, well, I just feel like ain't nothing working. It's keep coming up on a dead end. When you get back to the feet of Jesus, which is exclusively a dependence upon who he is and what he did at Calvary, all that's gone. All that's leaving. All, all that burden is heavy, and you shouldn't have been carrying it anyway. You get back to the cross, you'll find your Savior all loaded up with the burden you need and the yoke you need. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to have to quit. Let me see here. We'll get back into this. this. This is too good to just read over and not discuss and not 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 see the reality of what God really is doing. Now, Job chapter 7, verses 17 and 18, you need to write that down. That tells us that the Lord is trying his people every moment. Every moment the Lord is trying, trying to see. And this, this particular type, scriptures tie into that. What does it mean for him to be trying? He's trying me. He's examining me. He's investigating me. And it's not because he don't know. It's so that he can constantly add the benefits to my life if he can keep me shepherded on the right path and keep my feet where he set them to, where did he set my feet on a rock? Hallelujah. He brought me up out of the miry clay and set my feet on a rock. Hallelujah. That rock is the rock of who Christ is and what he did at Calvary. That's what makes Christ our everlasting strength, our everlasting rock of ages. Mm, hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory be to God. And every child of God that's not focused on, depending on, looking to the cross of Christ for all things, they're going to find God if they're even spiritually discerning. A lot of people think they're very spiritual in their discernment, but it's all carnal. And I know it's carnal. How do I know it's carnal? Because they can't even discern the chastening and the scourging of the Lord. They don't understand Scripture. They see Scripture in the light of their denominational whatever instead of the light it shines through being that of Calvary's cross. See, this is the place God is bringing his church back to. And everybody that, that reaches, listen, everybody who's been off track all these years, decades, all these years, all this, all this fads and winds of doctrine that just turn into tornadoes in the church, all over spiritual tornadoes, <coughs> thinking this is it and this is it and this is it. The cross is it, my friend. That was it. It's always been it with God before the foundation of the world. And if you move away from it, the chastening of the Lord is there. It's there. Most people, Christians in the church, who think they have the gift of spiritual discernment, it's all carnal unless they're looking through the cross. It's the only place we can discern properly is the very place God set our feet on that rock, gave us eyes to see through faith in that precious blood of the Lamb. Outside of that, Christians are being chastened whether they can recognize it or not if they truly are Christians. It's been good today. It's been very good today and encouraging and challenging and truthful right here in the Word. And we're going to get right back into this, se this section of Scripture next Monday morning if we're still here on planet Earth. But I'm really looking for the Lord to be with uh, to come and get us so we can be with Him forever and ever, probably before I say amen here in a few moments. Uh, but 
I'm so glad you, you found us online, and I encourage you just to join us every week and, and, and share these sessions on social media everywhere that you can so that your families, friends, co-workers can have an opportunity to hear the truth that you're hearing, and maybe they'll begin to prosper in the truth that you're prospering in. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And don't forget, in the morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, we'll be right back over in the studio in 1 Peter chapter 2, and the Lord will have something special for us as always then. So uh, just a little surprise, and Andrew will be here this weekend, him and Rebecca, and he'll be ministering Sunday morning, so you don't want to miss out. Tune in 10 a.m. Sunday morning for worship service, and I'll see you in the morning. Until then, if the Lord stirs your heart to give, that's between you and him. You can do that at thecrosswaychurch.com, or you can text the word GIVE to the number 903 231 5950. I'll see you in the morning. Until then, stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. We'll see you then.